Hello, everyone. Welcome to our guest webinar this evening. Um, thank you for joining PRC Saltillo's guest webinar. I'm Heather Prenovo, uh, Saltillo AT consultant and training and implementation team member. I'll be moderating the webinar tonight along with Beth Waite Lefevre. We're excited to have Krista Howard and Brandy Wentland with us tonight to talk about navigating teletherapy during the pandemic through virtual AAC groups. They will share useful links and demonstrate some activities with you and an AAC user live. We have a few housekeeping details that we're going to look at first. Um, if you have trouble hearing or connecting to the webinar, please log out and log back into the webinar. If that doesn't work, you may need to restart your computer. Handouts are found in the handouts section of the toolbar. Um, you are able to type questions into the question window on the toolbar. Um, and we will address them with the presenter at the end if time allows. To receive ASHA credit for your participation tonight, please download the ASHA form and instructions uh, from the materials section of your toolbar. Remember to put today's date on your form and we will use that to identify the correct course number. You must stay online on a computer the entire time to actively participate. You will receive an email from PRC Saltillo via GoToWebinar tomorrow. This will have a link to the recording, the handouts, ASHA instructions and forms, and your certificate of attendance. Please allow a full 24 hours for this to be sent before reaching out to PRC Salt Hello to inquire about them. Submit ASHA participation forms within the next 15 days. Make sure you put the name of the class and the date in the subject line of your email when you submit them um, to info at printrom.com. If you don't use the ASHA CE registry to track your CEUs, you can use the attached certificate as proof of attendance. You only need to submit the ASHA form to us if you pay for the ASHA registry and want us to send it in. Finally, a feedback survey will pop up as you leave the webinar. Um, your input is very valued. We hope you take a few minutes and share your thoughts with us um, the presenters and the training implementation staff review this information and consider suggestions for future events. And one last note on our disclosures. Um, here are the financial and non-financial disclosures for both Krista and Brandy. And also note, PRC Saltillo is a proud sponsor of our guest webinars um, as a platform for sharing information. Please note that the content presented as in the webinar has been created by presenters and as such may not reflect views and opinions of PRC Saltillo employees. This course is being offered for, for 1.15 ASHA CEUs. And with that, I will turn things over to Krista and Brandy. We appreciate them being here tonight to share their expertise with us. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Getting Social During the Pandemic. My name is Brandi Wentland. I am Krista. I am Krista Howard. I am an AAC user and until COVID-19 was an AT technician providing aided language simulation, ALS, and training at the first day program. I am a mom of a nine-year-old son. In addition to raising my son and working, I am a student at Arizona State University pursuing my bachelor degree. I am also enrolled in the SOPR program at Estrell Mountain College. I, I am pleased to be the first slipper who is an AAC user. I presented at many conferences around the nation sharing my experience as an AAC user and a model for other AAC users. I assist with adding content and support for the We Speak AAC LLC Facebook group. I am also assist with various virtual social groups including Out and About. And my name is Brandy Wentland. I'm a speech language pathologist. I specialize in AAC and provide AAC trainings, evaluations, and implementation through social groups and ongoing therapy. I graduated from California State University, Chico, in 2014. And a few years ago, I started Out and About East Valley, an offshoot of Caroline Musselwhite and Deanna Wagner's groups, Out and About. I presented on various courses on AAC at 
conferences, schools, clinics, universities, and privately held events. So I have a number of Facebook groups, including We Speak AAC, AAC Tibbets and Tools, and Out and About. Just to get started here, I wanted to introduce you to my great friend, Krista. We met at an airport, believe it or not. And Krista is my, my friend, not a client, just to make that clear. I'm going to be your friend forever. Absolutely. We will definitely be friends forever. I love you, Krista. Thanks for joining me here today and for your friendship. As a result of the activities presented in this session, participants will be able to generalize the need for virtual AAC social groups during and beyond the pandemic, identify the benefits of including graduate school student interns in virtual AAC session planning, and integrate them into service delivery. Connect AAC users and virtual social groups to reduce feelings of isolation while simultaneously targeting therapy goals. Summarize useful resources for getting started with virtual AAC social groups, integrate motivating activities and social groups for AAC users, experiment with various ways to provide modeling and Zoom activities. At the beginning of the pandemic, my good friend Krista came to my house and we spent the first week trying to figure out how we were gonna transition. We contacted my alma mater and found out the graduate students were having a similar situation. They weren't able to finish their internships. Many of them didn't have the hours they needed to graduate or to receive their temporary license. We decided to get together with my alma mater and take on as many interns as possible. We took on six interns in order to help transition in therapy. We realized this was a great opportunity to meet both of our needs. I needed assistance in transitioning to teletherapy, they needed ours, and work together to bring our brains together and figure out how we were going to make this happen. At this time, I had a concussion. So welcome to the opportunity of having young, new, almost grads help me out with figuring out how we were going to do lesson planning, how we were going to keep kids engaged across the screen. Through this, we learned from one another. We created new resources and we shared them all over Facebook with other SLPs in the same situation. We found that we had more hands on deck. And they, that gave us an opportunity to start social groups. As we brainstormed these social groups, we talked about how will these groups be formed? Should we organize our groups by age, by common interest, by gender, or by the type of AAC device that they used? We thought about what goals could be targeted through teletherapy and what activities would be engaging for these group members, especially now that we were no longer in person. We had to think about how we were going to provide aid and language stimulation when we weren't there to touch the client's device. We also had to think about how these new social groups were going to be funded. Hi, Brandy. It's Heather. Useful resources for getting started with virtual. I'm. We're having some audio going in and out on your camera, Brandy, and just wondering if um, turning off your webcam will help. We'll leave Krista's webcam on and see if that helps with the audio. Okay, Krista, you can keep going. Virtual travel around the world. Creating stories with visual supports. Movement activities. Family photo. Pranks. Dress up making food with our openings and closing we found it would be really important to create some anchors for our clients so that every time we got into a session they knew what to expect we set up common fun ways to say hello and say goodbye krista what are some of your favorites I am Krista. See you later, alligator. After all, crocodile. See you soon, Babu. One of the other activities we started to do in therapy were pranks. I adapted this from Dr. Caroline Musselwhite's Teachers Pay Teachers Bouquet. We found ways to use pranks that we purchased on Amazon and then 
then separated those prints into different gift bags. We printed off the scripts from her bouquet that she created and put the scripts in the bag with each of the prints. Then we dropped this off of our clients' doors. They looked forward to each time I rang their door and yelled out, Don't melt it! And ran away. Krista, what's your favorite prank? The gun. Want to show them how you do Do you? Do you want Jim? Do you want gum? I love some gum. Ouch! I got you. You sure did. These are some of the prints that were included in the box and so many more. Yes, I did use a group, a social group online on Zoom. One of our other favorite activities happened during happy hour. We decided since we couldn't get together anymore as SLPs in person, we were gonna start having Zoom happy hours. This gave us an opportunity to practice activities that we would do during our therapy sessions. One of the first activities I created was a hair, virtual hair salon. Dr. Er, Lauren Ender showed me how to do this on an app on, on the iPad. I put the app here for you. But before I knew about this app, I created my own in PowerPoint. Krista, would you like to show everyone how to do this? I want. I want the purple one. Do you want the one with the long braid or the ponytail? Short. All right, we got the short purple one. And I'm going to put this on your face over here. Which hairstyle do you want? Which dress do you want? Purple. One. Awesome. I want purple one. Those are going to look great together, Krista. And don't worry, guys, we have a new shop just for you. Our friend Sean wants to use his picture so we could show you. As you can see, there's a space here, and I've used transparent images. So that each of these images will lay right on top of one another. So that I can show you exactly what it would look like for Krista to be in this dress and to join us for a night out on the town. For those of you that are not as tech savvy, feel free to use the app that's listed on this slide. One of our other favorite activities that was created by Alexis Martinez and Sarah Cruz interns for We Speak AAC was feeding activities, where we got to create different meals that we wanted throughout. Krista, what do you want on your pancakes? I want strawberry and banana. Bananas. I want strawberry and bananas. That's all. So I'm looking for transparent sliced strawberries. I write the right word transparent in there so that I'm most likely to get a transparent image to put right on top of the pink without any interfering background. Now, the first time I did this, I didn't totally walk you through it. So I'm going to go ahead and this box, exactly how I did this. I went into the insert tab, did image, searched the web, went over to this box here, typed in the word transparent. I decided I wanted sliced strawberries instead of whole. 
and search for the item that I was looking for. Randy, it's Heather. I'm gonna have you pause for just one more second and I apologize for the interruption. We're gonna see if we can get your audio um, to come through just a little bit clearer. If you could click on your audio tab. Okay. And pick the um, where your microphone is coming from. Okay. And it, try, is there two selections? No, just one. Just the one? I have microphone and speakers as my two options. Okay. Um, and then we're going to try having you switch it from um, computer audio to the phone call audio. Well, hold on. You, Brandy, do oh. you have your phone? <laughs> do you have your phone there? Uh, she may have switched. Thanks for your patience while we're working through this. We want to be able to hear her enthusiasm, so let's see if we can get her connected. Thank you everybody for your patience as she's logging in here. We just wanted to make sure that everybody gets to hear all of this great information. While that's getting set up, I did see some questions that people asked about um, the handouts. The handouts are in that tab on the right side in your taskbar. They will also be included in the follow-up email that you receive. Almost there. Thank you guys for your patience.
All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, so we've got Chris sliced bananas up here and they're way too big. Something you can talk about with each of your clients is, Krista, what size bananas do you want on your pancake? So I'm having trouble hearing Krista. I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to that next slide and hope you guys can help me hear Krista. Krista, can you click on mute on your computer? All right, so this next set of slides was created by Joyce Wilson and Sarah Morris. Also, grads for We Speak AAC. They learned that the clients that were in this social group were very motivated by cars. So they created a lesson plan that allowed our clients to make their own cars. We targeted various core words, which they put on this slide for you. And we used predictive chart writing in order to work with these skills. Hey, Krista, if you could choose one of these cars to be yours, which one would you choose? My. Car is white. My car is white. Good choice, Chris. I like a good family car. So you've moved your favorite car over here. And last time I talked, you wanted flower types. Do you still want the flowers, or do you have a different today? Yes, I do. All right, so let's go ahead and move that flower right down here and over here. And Krista now has some flower top tires to drive around with on her family car. Krista, now that we've added flowers to your car, how would you like to describe it? My car has. flowers and is white. My car has flowers and is white. Nice. I'm going to take her car from this slide along with her flowers and bring it to our next slide where Krista gets to choose what, who she wants to have drive her car. I want love. I want love, Emyo. Was that the love one, Krista? Yes. Yes. Awesome. I love the idea of having a love driver for your car. For some of our clients, they were working on sequencing and retelling stories. We found that by using visuals to create the story first, it really helped with, with retrieval and the ability to fully flesh out a story. This client that created this story and this visual to go along with it was at the sentence level with, with prompting when we started off the pandemic. He is now able to impose this many sentences with very minimal prompting in order to compose a full story about an event. When we started off the pandemic, I was really concerned that a lot of my therapy sessions required a lot of lesson planning, a lot of forethought ahead of time, and seemed to be clinician directed. I was really used to doing client directed play. So I wanna show you how we solved this. I talked with Beth over at Lesson Picks, and she showed me that you can get an add-on onto PowerPoint. You literally can start with a complete blank PowerPoint when you start your therapy session, even in a group. I'm going to do this with you today so you can see how it takes minimal effort 
in order to get your clients engaged. As you can see, all of my prepositions that I put in my tray on the website for lesson picks are right here. I'm going to go over to the search tab and give Krista an opportunity to tell us where she would like to go today. I want to go the beach. I want to go the beach. I think that's a great idea. You and I both really love water. I'd love to go there with you. All right. What would you like to do when you get to the beach, Krista? What's the first thing you want to do? I want to float with you. I want to float with you. I would love to float with you. That sounds like a lot of fun. Do you want the yellow tube or the orange tube? Yellow. Yellow. All right. I'll take the orange and take the yellow tube, and we will float in the ocean together. This sounds amazing. When this pandemic is over, will you promise me we can do this together? Yes. Awesome. What should we do next? We want to eat banana, bananas. That sounds awesome. And as you can see, I'm actually able to use the same symbols that are on Chris's Unity vocabulary on her accent so that we can eat bananas. And this helps with some of the symbol recognition. So we can eat bananas while we're floating down the ocean. All right. Is there anything else you want to bring with you or anything else you'd like to do? Hammock, hammock. That sounds so relaxing. Krista, what color hammock should do you want to be in? I want green. I want green. All right, I'll take the red one. And we'll hang out here beach in our hammock. This sounds amazing. All right. And what should we do before we go? What should we do? I don't know. Um, you know, I'm getting thirsty. What do you want to drink? One, one. I knew we were good, gonna be good friends. <laughs> All right, here we go. And also a symbol from Unity, which is the same vocabulary that Krista uses. We've got some wine out here on the press. All right. So after we do that, we can insert a text box, and we can talk about it. So, so what should we title this? A day at the 
Beach. A day at the beach. Love it. All right, what did we do first? We float, floated. What did we do next? We ate a banana. Then what happened? We played in the hammock, hammocks. We laid in the hammocks. What an awesome day. Ah. We drank thirstily wine. We drank wine. If you were to wrap up your story, your last sentence be. We. Had a good day. We had a good day. I agree. This sounds like an amazing day. And that's it. All right. So as you can see so far, we really haven't done any form of aided language stimulation. Even though we might have used some of the symbols, it really didn't show anyone the motor plan or where any of the symbols were on the device. So we had to figure that out for our therapy session. Some of the things that Krista and I brainstormed at the beginning of the pandemic is that we could take screenshots from any AAC app and utilize them right in our PowerPoint like we've done here. We could then use our cursor to circle or we could use Zoom annotate feature to highlight a button that is someone to select or to gesture different options. Another idea that Krista came up with was utilizing emulators of Zoom. She's utilized chat editor and path in order to provide aided language stimulation during some of our therapy activities. Cultural dance, scavenger hunt, food fight, music slash dance trends, traveling around the world. I found that sitting for an hour in my chair was making me quite restless and sore. Also, our clients were having a hard time paying attention for an entire hour, so we decided to incorporate some brain breaks. Some of the things have included yoga and some videos that we found online. I'd like to show you one of them. Put your right hand on your left knee, your left hand on your right. Your knees will in and out, your hands stay tight. Now keep on if you're moving, put switch hands on your knees. Keep on moving, get out till we freeze. freeze. Come out and freeze. Additional activities we've done is utilize our AAC devices to access Alexa or the Echo. Krista and I learned that we could also practice some different song lyrics. When I was taking ESL in college, my professor suggested that I take song lyrics and find them as a way to practice and learn new words. 
we found that this carried over to AEC devices as well. We had a lot of fun learning how to sing. We've got a friend on the internet with Word Power 101. We also created our own dance moves. Later, we went on to Teachers Say Teachers, a free resource called Granny Fez, where we worked on following directions, anywhere from one step, two step, and three step, even some with complex multi-step directions. Sarah Cruz and Alexis Martinez, interns for We Speak AAC, created this activity where we travel all around the world, virtually with our clients. They adapted this from Dr. Caroline Musselwhite's literature. As you watch the following slides, download this now on our Teachers Pay Teachers site. Our, our, our Teachers Pay Teachers site is called We Speak AAC, and the link is here. We've put it on sale for today only. That way, all of you that are attending today can get 20% off the resource. The first thing we did as we started to travel around the world is figure out where we wanted to go. So Krista, where do you want to go today? Italy. Italy. Awesome. Let's find out what the weather is there so we know how to pack. We utilize things like maps and weather and other various websites to teach our clients skills on how to find out what to pack, where to go, and how far things work. It looks like it's going to be 76 degrees and partially cloudy. Some of the it looks like it'll be in the 90s. So if we head back over here to our slide, what words would describe Italy this time of year, Krista? Hmm. Warm. Yeah, I think it looks warm too. It looks pretty sunny, right? So since the weather is warm, what do you think you're gonna pack in your bag? Shorts and. Shorts and shirts. All right, I found you a pair of board and let's get you a shirt. What kind of shirt do you want? Black. All right. All right, so I've got a black shirt, a pair of shorts, and if we were to continue on, Krista could say things like a camera, a toothpaste, toothbrush, swimsuit, all the things that she'd want to pack for Italy. Another thing we could do is to work on our clients spelling their names. Now, Krista definitely knows how to spell her name, but I'll have her demonstrate that for us. You could see how you could do this with an AAC user. Krista, can you tell me the first letter in your name? K. R. I S T A Which would also be a good opportunity for you to work on phonological awareness, articulation. This activity can target so many different goals. Now, Chris said, do you know how far away it is? How long do you think it's going to take us to get away? Twelve hours. 
to take a look. We're going to use the directions. And I live in Gilbert, Arizona. Krista lives close by. So if we were to, hey, Krista, how do you think we're going to get there? Are we going to use a car, or a bike? Airplane. You're right, because we need to travel all the way across the ocean. So Krista was pretty close with her 12 hours. It looks like it's going to take two of us 15 hours by plane to get to Italy. Have you ever been to Italy before, Krista? No. I haven't either, but I know some of my families from there. Let's take this little yellow man at the bottom corner here and drop him off there so we can see what it's going to be like once we get there. Oh. Mm. Let's go. I agree, Krista. If we can get on a flight, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so now that we've packed our bags and we're ready to go, time to get on the plane. For many of our clients, they had anxiety about taking a flight. So we found a website where we could practice getting on a plane. Other clients, like Krista and I, are super excited to get on a plane. So it gave us an opportunity to talk about our emotions while we video. Looks like we're having trouble loading this video. So I'm going to go ahead and close out on this one and see if Heather can load those for us. I can load that. For Mm. It's loading.
So if we continued on with the video or fast forwarded, you would be able to see the plane take off and eventually land. Once we land, we capture photos from the airport that we will be landing at, and we compare and contrast it to a terminal that we've been to before. Krista, how would you describe the picture on the lower left? More people. Yeah, lots of people. Which one of these terminals would you rather go to? Less people. Less people one. Yeah, I agree. I like the trees that are outside and the trees that are in, uh, on the lower level of the airport. After we land, we typically go and ex experience some traditional music and dance. When we traveled to Mexico, we learned the Mexican hat dance. This also provided a movement break. We'd like to show you that video next. It's from south of the border from Mexico. It is a Mexican hat dance and loved by all children. It can fast and slow tempo. And there is no introduction to the dance. So as soon as we start it, when the music starts, we go right into the dance. It starts with a right heel, left heel, or right, pop, pop, a right, a left, pop, pop, a right, a left, a right, a right, a right, and left, pop, pop. Now we differentiate for grade level. So kindergarten, we might want to use the locomotive heel. When we get to the course, you would skip or gallop. With first grade, they're ready for a right hand star. In second grade, they're ready for an elbow turn. Fun dance, love by all. Let's do it. Hey! definitely a favorite amongst most of our group. We also compare and contrast country flags. Mexican is my favorite. Me too, Krista. I really love the flag. What we learned when we explored this flag was that there was an eagle and it was holding a snake, and there was a prickly pear cactus underneath it. I noticed the red, white, and green stripes, but I never noticed what was in the center of the flag. We've talked about some of those things, but there's some of the things that were different on each of the flags. We have money. <laughs> we do. We have money to travel. And sometimes it's called different things in different places around the world. We talk about what the names of them and what makes them the same and what makes them different from our money. Chris, what's the first thing you would buy in Italy if you have their money? Food. I, I will buy food. I agree, Krista. My says, rule me. This is another reason why we're great friends. So if we went to Mexico, these are some of the foods that we could eat. After we select the foods, we talk about the ones we'd be willing to try. Hey, Krista, if you and I traveled to Mexico together, would you try churros? No. Me either. I have a gluten intolerance and a dairy allergy. So unfortunately, I couldn't eat those no matter how good they look. 
How about quesadillas? Is that something you'd want to eat? Yes. All right, so I'm going to put this in your yes column. Unfortunately, for the same reasons, I'm unable to try those. My favorite thing to eat when I'm in Mexico are street tacos. Is that something you try to eat? No. Oh, bummer. I guess I'll have to eat those on my own while you eat the quesadillas. How about tostadas? Is that something you like to eat? Yes. All right, I'm going to put that in your yes. I wouldn't mind eating them. They're a little though. When I went to Mexico last time, I had a family with me homemade ballet. It's one of my favorite soups. Is that something you'd want to eat with me? Yes. Awesome. So that goes in both of our yes columns. We have three things in common and two things that we and well, we have three things that we're both going to eat and two things we chose not to eat. Next, we go on a tour of some famous places around the country. Krista, which one do you want to go to today? Hanoi. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. Let's give that a shot. As you can see, I've utilized a lot of open-ended questions to give Krista an opportunity to use her authentic voice. Krista also utilized the question to ask me questions. It's important that we include not only us asking questions, but AEC users get to ask their own. Wow, Krista, here's two more places we could go in Vietnam. Which one would you want to visit first? Theme. Theme park. Mmm, that looks amazing. Those bubbles look pretty fun, but I think you and I, we would be floating somewhere in that water. At the end of our travels, we do a story retell to talk about the different places that we've gone. Different clients have different abilities and skill sets. So sometimes, if we're in a group, We'll all, we'll all share the, the task of creating a story retail. Other times, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, one client might produce the whole thing, and you can decide what kind of level of prompting, prompting you use. Last, we stamp our passport. So I'm going to type in Krista's name here, 
And since we got to go to Italy today, I'm going to put that in here. Krista, what other dance should I go and find? What? Let's see. We went to Italy today. Where else did we go today? So you can see I'm giving her a visual cue here. Mexico. Awesome. That's where Chris and I should be right about now. We intended to go to Isaac together. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, that was rescheduled for next year. But I'm really looking forward to doing that with her. And I'd also probably want to put a stamp here from Vietnam. We were able to find all of these stamps from the lost teacher on Teachers Pay Teachers, and I put the link here for you. Recently, our interns, Alexis Martinez and Sarah Cruz, helped us put together resources for you. We talked about that earlier on in the slideshow, where I said that for today only, we're doing 20% off on our page on Teachers Pay Teachers, and it's right here. We've provided one that's in PowerPoint for those of you that prefer to do it that way, and one that's in Google Slides. These are the same resource, just in two different formats. Adam about started approximately 25 years ago by Caroline Muslowite and Deanna Wagner in Phoenix, Arizona. Guess what? I was one of foundling members. Now I am helping others and here I am talking to you now. Brandy started a group too five years ago and now she does virtual groups. Out and About started in the Phoenix area and eventually grew into three groups in the Central, West, and East Valley. Later, a parent wanted a group for her daughter that lived in Tucson, Arizona. She got together with a local PRC or Amsal Pillow Rut and started Out and About Tucson. Our intern from last summer brought Out and About back to my alma mater, Chico State, and started a group there that carries on. We have virtual members that have been joining us during the pandemic now that we're doing all of our out and abouts online. We've had people join us from Dubai, Thailand, and across the U.S. We hope to start one soon in Tennessee. Out and about is not, is, is not proprietary. We really want to see this group start in other locations. So we've included one of our flyers here so you can see what some of the content is in each of our sessions. Recently, one of our activities was a jar of us, where we got together and created jars individually. Then, collectively, we brainstormed different things that we could put on strips of paper and insert inside the jar. We talked about who we are and places that we go. We said different things to people that were helpers in our community to thank them for all of the work that they're doing during the pandemic. Krista, who did you write your note to and what did you say? Thank you for helping out to a nurses. Thank you for helping out to a nurse. Wow, Krista, that's yeah. awesome. We brainstormed different places we wanted to drop it off. Like Krista dropped it off to some nurses at a local hospital. Other people dropped it off at fi to firefighters and to different counselors and psychologists. Caroline Musselwhite, Deanna, and myself attended a workshop by Conducted Stories. They taught us various improv activities that we thoroughly enjoyed. We adapted some of these activities to be utilized with AAC users and later adapted those to be used virtually during teletherapy. One of my favorite activities was family photo. 
where all of us chose a new last name to unify us as a group. Sometimes our last name was a verb, other times an adjective. Occasionally, it was a noun. In order to protect our users' privacy, we changed their Zoom last name. Then, we all posed as our new last name and took a family photo. Here are some instructions on how to change your name in Zoom. And here is our animal family photo, where he posed as a moose, a kitten, a lion, all different animals. Krista, what did you pose as? Dog. I love it. I love puppies. Krista even convinced me to make a silly family photo so that we could show you what it's like to have fun. Hmm. If you'd like to learn more about Out and About, you can email us or check out Caroline Musselwhite's free Out and About book on Teachers Pay Teachers. We also have other webinars, handbooks, and resources that are coming your way. If you'd like to learn more about, out, about EKAC, you can check us out on our Facebook page or on Instagram. We also have our Teachers Pay Teachers page that I showed you earlier. If you do decide to download the resource, I wanted to show, wanted to show all of you a sneak peek so you could know what you're receiving. Here, we created a template to show you how you could insert the country that you'd be visiting. We even put in instructions for before takeoff. We inserted a slide for weather, the suitcase. We included the video that we showed you earlier and inserted all kinds of templates for things like the airport, the dance, the songs, the flag, the currency, the language, even some local food. We included the voting, the brain breaks, various landmarks that you can see, and ways to talk about what your favorite thing was. We included a passport that you can use and all of the stamps. This is a template so that you can travel all around the world and change the different countries, states, or continents that you visit. For those of you that are interested in receiving fully completed slides, we'll be uploading those later so that if you don't want to put in all of those different um, country information, you can take one that we've already made for Vietnam, Iceland, Mexico, Canada, and all the other places we've traveled this summer. We want to thank all of you for joining us here today and to the people that help make so many of these things happen. I've learned so much from Caroline Musselwhite and Deanna Wagner, Laurel Buell, and Anthon, and they generously supported Out and About. PRC Saltillo has also helped us make t-shirts and sweatshirts for our Out and About members. So if you start your own Out and About group, you can order those shirts here on our Bonfire account. I also want to thank the CSU interns that helped compose all of the materials that I shared with you today. It wasn't without them. If it weren't for them, then we wouldn't have all of these resources that I could share with you today. We're now going to open it up for questions for anyone that has anything that wasn't answered earlier in the chat. Thank you, Brandy. And while people um, have some questions coming in, could you go back up to um, the hairstyle and those fun activities where we were having some audio difficulties and just kind of re-explain how you were doing those things? People had a lot of great questions about how did you get the images to the front. Um, so if you could just maybe go through those again, that would be great. Sure, no problem. So for those of you that want to do this on your iPad, there's an app that does it all for you. For the rest of you that like to do it yourself, like me, you can do this in Google Slides or in PowerPoint. I did find that it was a little bit easier to do in PowerPoint because I had the option of removing, removing backgrounds. However, right now, I'm going to show you how to do this in Google Slides. I went ahead and inserted all of these transparent images, and I found them by saying insert image search the web, transparent, and then I selected a hairstyle that I wanted to it here. If you can't find the one you want here, obviously search the web. I'm going to show you how to do that as well because I have a tips and tricks on how I do that. 
I type in hairstyle. And then I choose this option for images up here on the top left. Once I'm there, I utilize the tools and change this to transparent. This then allows me to click an image and see if it's truly transparent. If it's got a checkerboard background, that's not something you can use. So you can copy it, come back to your slide, and insert it right in here. So now I have a redhead option. In PowerPoint, I edited the space so that we wouldn't have all the other background information. This is something that you can't really do in Google Slides, so I did have to do that ahead of time. Then I took the hair and put it right on top of her face. If for some reason that didn't work for you, it's probably because her face is on top of it. So if you don't want her face on the top, what you can do is just copy. And whatever you paste last shows up on, on the top. Another trick that I use when I want to arrange the layers is I go up here to arrange, I go to order, and I can say send it backwards. And that allows me to make sure that what I have in front is what I want in front. Then I can take each of these images and I can come on down here and paste them here. I can click on it, resize it, and move it over here. So now if Krista wants to wear a red dress with her red head, hair, we can move this over here and put it right down here. And that dress looks a little too big, so I'm going to shrink that up. Another little feature that you might be interested in is how did I get this background on? I went to Format. Oh, sorry, I went to Slide. Okay. Choose image, Google image search, and let's just say we are going to go to a classroom. I can now change our background to be a classroom. And now we're all hanging out in real clothes to go to school. And they did the same thing with these pancakes. Insert, image, search the web, transparent, and then maybe Krista wants some chocolate chips. And if I'm not finding what I'm looking at, I can go back over here. where I've already selected my transparent under tools, click on some chocolate chips, and you can see it's got the checkerboard in back, so I can copy it and paste it right in here. Were there any other questions that I can answer? Yes. So one of the questions that um, people were wondering is with your groups that you've been doing, your virtual AAC um, social things, what are the ages of your um, group members? I work with all ages. So some of my clients are in first and second grade and other clients are over 30 years old. I have found that I can work with AAC users and verbal clients, even in mixed groups, and that provides some integration. Awesome. Um, there was a question about um, if you have any activity ideas um, like this where um, there's more initiation um, from your users um, versus responding to questions. Any tips for that? Yeah, absolutely. 
Francisco. Oftentimes, I will just start off with a blank slide and say, what are we doing today? And let them take off. And what I found is that I have a point now that every time we start our discussion, he says to me, let's go on an adventure. I want to go to Australia. Today, he said, let's check out the White House. And he just went along and told me all the things that he wanted to do. And so literally sitting with a blank slide, no prep, and just allowing the client to completely leave the entire session. I love that idea. That sounds super fun. Um, another question we have for you is um, if they wanted to create an out and about group um, where they live, do you have suggestions on that? Um, would it be like a second job or is this more like a volunteer meetup type thing? It really depends. Um, for, for myself, we've chosen to make this a volunteer event that is once a month and it's just for a couple of hours once a month. And I found that to be very rewarding. And because I am self-employed, it brings in more business. Uh, so I look at uh, and the company that I contract with, we both look at it as a star um, event. For those of you that maybe work in schools, maybe you could talk with the school about doing this. Maybe you could do it with the teacher as a field trip. Um, it really depends on, on what setting you're in and what motivates you and what's the best way you think that you could do this. We do have a way for you to do to set up your own group. So I'm going to type in Caroline Musselwhite here. So you can see if you're interested in creating your own group, Deanna Wagner, here it is, Deanna Wagner also has it on her site. So let's go to Deanna Wagner's Teachers Pay Teachers. And you can download the Out and About book right here for free. And this is a full handbook on telling you how to, or not telling you, but explain the ways that you can set up your own group. We also offer our email address in case anyone wants some help in the beginning stages. Our email is outandabouttherapy1.com. You can email us and we're more than happy to help you set up your group. Perfect. Um, somebody was asking, um, do participants in this group pay to do it or is it um, free to them to come out and do? We do it for free. I think that would be up to you. And, and your models and depending on where you work and we've decided to make ours free and just decide basically free marketing it's it's our time but it allows us to to market and it also creates awareness and it's a way to give back to the community um, but it really depends on the individual and the time that they want to put into it on whether or not you want to charge perfect um we do have one kind of back into the uh, modeling and kind of splitting screens. So I know you mentioned you use Zoom and people were wondering, um, is there a way for you to be able to model on the device in Zoom and still keep your slides up or how were you navigating that? Yeah, and I had hoped to be able to show you guys that today, but it's a little bit difficult since we're not using Zoom right now. But let me see if I can show you on my iPad here. What I do is I open up the Zoom app on my iPad after I've already logged in on my computer on Zoom. So my computer is providing the video of me, and it's also sharing my slides if I happen to be using slides. But then my iPad then has the app, and I join as a second participant. And when I join as a second participant, I turn off the audio. I, I hit cancel when it gives me the audio option, and then I share a screen from here. So if I share my screen from here, and I open up my AAC app, Another thing that um, is we open up, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It takes a couple of minutes for it to load. And we share those screens with our clients. I'm going to go ahead and Welcome open to that chat editor. right now. And so you can see here, I've got Nova Chat 108 on my screen, and we can model here. And is this you have the annotate option so you can actually circle buttons you could like I could say 
what do you want me to do? And so some of my clients will tell me they want to dance with me or they want me to pretend to go to sleep. Or, you know, if they're really fine, they might tell me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been known to jump in my pool with all of my work clothes on just to get um, my clients to say things and know that, hey, if you ask me to do it, I'm going to go do it. I've been known with Krista, in fact, <laughs> both of us jumped in our pools for clients. So this is one way that we can create an open-ended question and still provide them some gestural cues to say, we can do anything on this page. What do you want us to do? Awesome. Lastly, take screenshots from our iPad and fit right into the slides. So for instance, here's Lamp Words for Life and say that we were on this page. I could put it right into my slide here and do some modeling here and say, where do you wanna go? Or who do you wanna have drive your car? I love to drive your car. So that you can model some of these core words and maybe the initial button for a sequence. Awesome. We have one more question for you. Um, someone was wondering if you would compare and contrast a little bit on when you're using Google Slides versus PowerPoint for your interactive activities. Really good question. Um, I'm in my 40s, so you have to know that I started off with desktop computers and PowerPoint way before Google Slides ever came out. So I was pretty much a die PowerPoint user until I got these amazing interns this summer. And what I learned with Google Slides is I have this ability to share. So here, I can choose to share with other people that are collaborating with me. I can also share with my clients. Also, if I were to share with Krista right now, Krista, I don't know if you have this open and you can demonstrate for them, but if Krista wanted to edit this slide, I'm going to give her a minute to try, but Krista can actually edit the slide. Even though I have it open, we can edit at the same time. So if Krista wanted to change her driver or her wheel, or she wanted to get rid of that lamp words for light, she could. I'm gonna give her a minute to see what she wants to do on this slide. With PowerPoint, I'm not do that sharing. It's more of a save it in the Dropbox and then we both have our own independent files and it's a lot harder for us to edit on the fly at the same time. It also allows if you have two people in your, two, like say an SLP and an SLPA in the, in the session, that one could be leading the activity and the other one could be the, type, the typing. Krista is not an SLPA yet, but she is an aide in our sessions and she does actual aided language from someone that's actually lived it and actually used the device so it allows her to be a part of our therapy session so chris is showing you how right now she is missing the slide even though i'm in it she's in it too and she's able to move things around on the slide the other thing that i like is that i'm able to insert images from the web on google slides with powerpoint for the most part i'm using the lesson picture to insert which has a lot of really good features. Um, so I'm gonna go back over to PowerPoint, log in my lesson kit. There we go. Well, you typed that. I did put in our um, chat window earlier that there's great information on the Lesson Picks website on how to get that add in in there. So people can go there. Yeah. And so you can use your tray, which is pretty cool. If you've already preloaded a tray on their website, you can do the search feature that I showed you. You can look for common option items. And one of my favorites are these occluders. So if I do have um, like lamp words for life on there, I could use this to highlight something. Um, you can browse by topic, which is another way to get that open-ended, what do you want from the client, let them choose. What should we do today? And, you know, lots of different options if they're looking. Um, and lastly, one of the new features is they have a spinner with the things that are in your tray. They have dice. Um, oops, let's create that. 
with the things that are in your tray, or you could choose dice with numbers. You could do multiple dice. And they also have draw cards at, with are in your tray. So I use both to answer your questions. And I, um, you know, there's different features for each that I just kind of flip flop the two based on what my needs are for that particular group. Perfect. Um, there was another question I missed earlier that was asking with your social groups that you've been doing during the pandemic about how many students or clients are you seeing in a group? It's a really good question. I have quite the variety. Um, sometimes it's only two clients. A lot of my groups are four to five. And then without and about, we have, I don't know, Krista, have we been like at 15 to 20? Two. Four, five, five, five. You've been in sessions with five. five had more than that. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah, that makes. Yeah, and so Krista and I, along with Deanna Wagner, Caroline Musselwhite, Alexis Martinez, and Sarah Cruz, and Marianne Bruno, we all jump in on those out and about calls, and then we lead breakout groups. So we start off with a lot. It's been, like I said, about 25 lately. And so then we'll separate that into groups with each of us leading. And then we come back together as a, as a group. So there's unification um, between the group and people that are friends can see each other at the beginning and the end. But then we can break out into different groups for various activities. Perfect. I'm going to give everyone an opportunity if they have any last questions for Brandy. I know one of the questions that did pop early on, um, and I know you um, showed us on your Teachers Pay Teachers, but they were wondering if it's possible um, to get a PDF of your slides so that they could see um, some more of the details um, to refer back to. And so I said I would ask you, and we can include that if possible, um, or if it's all in your other handout, that would be great too. Uh, that's a really good question. A PDF of this. How about I will put that up on our Teachers Pay Teachers website, and I'll make it a free resource. That would be great. That'd be easy for people to find. And I do have a couple more questions that came in. Um, could an SLP join your out and about session just to observe? Yes. I recommend that. I, I invite parents, SLPs, teachers, anyone to join. That way you can see what we're doing and it makes it a lot easier for you to replicate. And even maybe an SLP or a teacher or a parent that's a little nervous about aided language stimulation or whatever reason you want to be a fly on the wall, you're more than welcome to do that. We'd also love to have more hands on deck. Like we said, this is you know something we often volunteer to do. So it helps to have more hands to help us lead activities. Um, I also wanted to say someone earlier asked if um, we charge for it. And sometimes we make it a therapy activity. So if you're seeing a client while we're doing an out and about event, you could make that your therapy um, and join us on Zoom. So we're leading the session and you're modeling to the client and you're there to, to be their communication partner and to assist them. Perfect. And we had uh, Deanna sent us a comment that she's had participants from Singapore join. <laughs> so that's amazing to have people from all yes. over. Um, yes. And a, a little bit about the breakout rooms. It sounds like um, sometimes your breakout rooms are more focused on specific topics versus um, everybody doing the same thing. Is that? Yeah, sometimes our breakout rooms, we each do something different. Like when we did a pool party uh, last last month, this month, uh, last month when we did a pool party, one group worked on prepositions, another group worked on verbs, and the third group worked on adjectives. This coming month, we're going to go to the zoo and we're going to do the same activities. So it just depends on the on the event and the helpers and the people joining. Um, we kind of mix that up a bit. Depending depending on various um, things, I think Krista was going to add something, so I'm going to give her a chance. Yes, yes I volunteer too, and got wet. <laughs> yes, Krista 
and Terry, she definitely got wet. And she, she led a group, and they got to boss her around. That's one of my other favorite activities is who's the boss and put the AE sisters in charge, and they get to boss us around. I was just going to say, if, I'm wondering if Krista has any other things that she wanted to share with us as I get ready to wrap up. I love them. That's good. Are there any other tips you have for us, Krista? Model, model, model. I absolutely. And and to to add to that, you know, use AAC user to model is so much more authentic, and I think. It's really helpful for parents to see an adult AAC user that's been to college and that is confident with their device. I, I found that using Krista in a lot of our therapy sessions has been beneficial to Krista for herself and also for the client. That's perfect. Awesome. Well, if there aren't any more questions, people were saying, um, a lot of thank you, and you guys are such a wonderful team. We do want to thank you for this amazing presentation. These are amazing ideas to get us interacting virtually with our AAC users. We want to thank all our participants for joining us today and uh, working through our audio. So thank you. It worked out perfectly. We hope you enjoyed this guest webinar and look forward to seeing you in our future webinars. Again, there's a survey as you log out of the webinar, if you could give us your feedback. Tomorrow, um, you will be receiving an email that has links to the recorded webinar um, when it's going to be posted on our PRC and our Saltillo brand YouTube channels, as well as um, our Touch Chat YouTube channel. And the recording will be up. Give us a couple days just because we have to get it loaded. Um, it'll be up there. The handouts will be in there as well. Thank you again, Krista and uh, Brandy, for joining us. If you're using that ASHA CEU registry, please make sure you get that back to us um, in the next 15 days and include today's date and the Getting Social During a Pandemic title on the slides. And I'm just going to double check one more time to see if anybody threw any questions in while I was talking. I don't see any more. So we will thank you all for being here this evening. Have a great rest of your night. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.